everybody you know what time it is meet me at the sew machine time it's march i think i already showed you my chloe calendar it, today's march the 14th if this was february you know what today would be uh saint patty's day is thursday i don't know if you guys celebrate that or not but i'll be wearing green i'm not gonna get pinched so uh, chloe will be wearing green you know she will um you know where I've come from? The world's largest flea market in Canton, Texas. And am I tired? I walked and I walked and I wa I'm telling you I'm getting old because used to when I was young and thinner, I could, <laughs> world's largest flea market, I could put that out in one day. Man, I was so tired by about one o'clock. <laughs> Had to stop, eat me a corn dog, get me some uh, kettle corn. You know, all that good stuff that you do when you're at the flea market. I was expecting to find something really big and really memorable. You know how you get your mind set on something that you just, you know, you've got money in your pocket and it's burning a hole. Hole in it. <laughs> I didn't find anything big. Not one thing. Yeah, pretty sad. But I found a bunch of littles. And you know I love me a little. So I'm going to share them with you today. The first thing I got was, isn't that cute? It's a little chocolate mold. See that? A little chocolate mold. Very sweet. Good price. I wouldn't have bought it otherwise. I don't even collect these, but a girl here in the office collects them. And so, you know, I can't let her out, do me? So I got her a couple bunnies. She was thrilled. Got me a little uh, Dutch lady. My friend says this is a Christmas tree. It's not a Christmas tree. It's a little Dutch lady cookie cutter. I have the little Dutch man, but I never had the little Dutch lady. So now I have the Dutch lady. So that was good. Look at this beautiful crochet um, trim that I got. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it was green. So, I, you know, I had to come home with me. Can you imagine? I think I got this for like a dollar. Can wow. you imagine somebody crocheting that for a dollar? Oh my goodness, my grandmother's rolling over in her grave. I got two flower frogs. You know how I'm loving me some flower frogs. I like the deeper ones because what I like to do with them, got me two pairs of old scissors. You know I love me my old scissors. But the deeper ones are the better ones for the scissors. See how these, see, that, that, that's just not a good idea. So the deeper ones for the scissors, use these for arranging flowers. And uh, I saw somewhere on Facebook, somebody had put this down in a cute little round basket and had their stick, scissors sticking out of the basket. I thought that was pretty cute and clever. So cool. I might try and find me a little that's basket. Cool. Isn't that cute? Now I promised myself I wouldn't buy any jars. Because every time I go to Texas, I come home with four or five jars because I'm a jar fanatic. I love jars. I love putting all my little trinkety things in jars. And I saw these and I couldn't pass them up. Look at how cute those are. Olive oil. They had olive oh. oil in them. Wow. Yeah, and this one even has a hazel atlas marking. That's pretty, that's pretty special. That's cool. Now this one... I don't know. Well, this has a Hazel Atlas, too. No, I don't think that is Hazel Atlas. Maybe it is. I can't remember what that marking is. But anyway, they're pretty special. I don't care if they had markings or not. They're just pretty awesome. Look at those old rusty lids. Aren't they fun? That's cool. They're a great size for buttons or wow. trims. Anything, you know, anything you want to put and keep dust off of. Now, I'm one of those people, I don't buy anything full price. I don't buy anything at the price that they that they have on it or the price they say. I'll always say, uh, now, I think you could do a better price on that, or would you take this for that? So, this lady, she had a big suitcase full of doilies and things. And, of course, you know, I gravitated to the green ones. One, two, three, four... Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
10. I said, how much would you take for these green ones? And she says, oh, I don't know, a dollar. I gave her two dollars. I thought a dollar was a steal. Wow. I thought this lady's got to make some money. Wow. You can't make money selling 10 doilies for a dollar. Can you believe that, Peter? I wonder if this was some going to be somebody's bedspread. I don't know, but isn't it awesome? <laughs> yeah. It's super awesome. I paid yeah. $2 because I was feeling generous anyway. But now this is something I paid full price for and I shouldn't have. I should have talked her down, but I saw them and nearly had a conniption. You did. Yeah, let me get over here and get my uh, red ones. I love to spell out things with my uh, Scrabble type. So here's my red Scrabble tiles. And, you know, they have the natural ones. Everybody can find the natural ones. Uh-oh. Check this out, So what Peter. color are these? Oh! Blue with gold trim! Peter! Wow. Wow. And look at the hours of fun you can have. Blue with gold trim. Aren't those wow. beautiful? You can spell out anything you want to. You only get one Q, so there's only one quilt. You only get one to spell <laughs> quilt once. So, but isn't that cool? And they come in this bag. I threw the rest of the, the game away. It was all plastic. I think it was like the 50th anniversary or something. It was some kind of anniversary one, you know. And uh, when I opened that up, I didn't even, I think I paid $10 for all these letters. That's a lot. That's a lot of money. Uh, for because you can how get much them. is that per letter? Yeah, I don't know how many letters are in a Scrabble board. Do you know? We got Chris here today. Chris is our uh, intern. He's here from uh, Noblesville High School. Is that right? Yes. He's interning with us for this uh, school year, and then I think maybe I've heard through the grapevine he might even be working here this summer, yes. and that would be awesome because he's a pretty uh, smart fella. Putting in work. Yeah, pretty far, smart fella. So anyway, then check these out. Shoe molds. Are those not the cutest things you've ever seen? Now guess what they're doing with these, Peter? What are they doing? They're putting down rods in the holes here, spreading them apart, and they're using them for easels for your artwork. Like <gasps> that. <laughs> or for your stitchery. Yeah, your cross. If you had a little cross, cross stitch, stitch frame, you could put that right in there. You could frame one of your potato chip blocks. Oh, and have a different block each. And just day. have a different block each time. But isn't that cute? I loved those. And twelve dollars, Peter. I think I talked her down to ten dollars. That's a steal. Mm. A steal, because I saw them someplace else for forty-five. The exact mm. same ones. I know it. I'm <laughs> telling you, you've got to be a shopper. And then I love to collect old spools. These are from the uh, mills that make fabric, and uh, they don't do it this way anymore. But uh, these are old spools, and I love to collect all different sizes. So this is the granddaddy, and this is the baby. And I love that. And look how this doily fits right on top there. Isn't that cool? Whoa. I know. I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I love them. I love them. I love them. And then... Check this out. Carmichael's chips. I've been on the internet. I can't find out what kind of chips were in this. But look at this. It's the perfect size for my potato chip box. Isn't that so fun? I'm going to store them. You think I can get a bunch in there? You could probably get a couple hundred. I think I could get a few in there because look at how many I did while I was gone. I did. Weigh them down with your flour. Glass. While I was in Texas, I did this many. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I did ten while I was in Texas. Oh, nope, I only did nine because Tammy gave me this one. Tammy says, oh, look what I found. I said, can I have it? She <laughs> said, yes. So I said, That's, I can spot a potato chip block a mile away. So I'm going to get my potato chip blocks in here. And then I got this. It's in super great condition. I think I paid two dollars for it. Wow. I know. Isn't it cute? And look, you can stick real, you know, like uh, fake flowers in it, or you can put a hanky in it, or, you know, just, oh, how cute is that? I love that. And then this was it. This was the creme de la creme of what I got. 
It is an old sewing kit that some little old lady was doing all oh by hand. Gosh. She had cut out all the little tumbler blocks. Oh my gosh. Look at all these little tumbler blocks. These wow. fabrics are the original stuff. These are not reproductions, people. These are the real thing. And look at her patterns, Peter. Look at what she did. She would put that on the fabric and she would cut it out by hand. She'd probably trace around it and cut it out by hand. Wow. Isn't that something? And then here's the melon. There's a melon pattern in here somewhere. But anyway, here's the patterns. Look at this for the inside and the outside. Oh, this is the melon pattern because you put it on the fold. See that? You put it mm. on the fold. That's the melon pattern. And then this is just a little piece of bias. But look at this. And it's all done by hand. Look at that. Wow. And actually what it is, Peter, is it's part of a double wedding ring. Can you see if you had another one of these here, another one of these little lines of mm -hmm. stitches, how that would be one-fourth of a double wedding ring? Oh, wow. Isn't that cool? That is sweet. But she made a little um, umbrella with it. I love it. Wow. I love it. And those are all the pieces. Those are all the pieces. Authentic. I'm going to say 40s, 30s, 40s uh, fabrics. But this is how they used to make their templates. Wow. Remember we talked about that? Yeah. We talked about how, you know, they didn't just have books and books and books of... Uh, stuff that they could look at and uh, get their ideas from. They had to swap ideas with each other. So did you talk a lady down on that one? Yes, I did, buddy. Yes, I did. <laughs> and I got it for a great price, too. I was thrilled. I walked out of that little uh, shop dancing, a uh, little booth. Dancing, dancing, dancing. Oh, man. So it says blocks of small quilt pieces pre-cut by pattern and sample and pattern. Isn't that just, and she's got it in a little box, her little memory box. Her we little memory box. We talked about memory boxes. And speaking of which, look at this old cigar box. Look at that. Thompson and Company Incorporated. Peter, do you know anybody who smokes cigars? Mm -hmm. Made in Tampa. Peter smokes cigars, mm -hmm. and this just happens to be Peter's memory box. I bought that at a flea market when I was probably eight or nine years old. Really? Eight or nine years old? So it's probably, what, 150 I, by now? I used to love to go to the flea market. Yeah. I love it. I would go, I would I go. Love, do you not still love? No. You don't? No. Why not? Because your house is full of junk already? No. Why you know, don't you, you get, like? You get criticized enough times, then you just don't find it to be fun anymore. Oh, don't be criticized for going to the flea market. I'll take you to the flea market, and we'll have gobs of fun. Well, so when I got back to work Friday, Peter had this on my desk. And I thought he was giving it to me for a memory box. Oh. But was I surprised, surprised. He has this little latch, and it opens up, and Peter... Got the bug. He got the four inch finished square bug. How many did you do, Peter? Oh, I think there's either 16 or 18 there. Look at this. He went way ahead. I couldn't he stop. He got his book. He just couldn't, couldn't stop. stop. And look at this. Is this just not the neatest, funnest, coolest thing? That you ever did see. I love this one. And you know what Peter found out? He found out that it's all about your fabric choices. Mm -hmm. These are simple blocks. But simple. what really makes them pop is the fabric choices. And I love the way he has put this purple with this cheddar. I have never seen that before. I have really never seen anybody put purple with the cheddar. And I love it. I said... Peter, that might be something that has to go in my <laughs> next book. But look at that, how he fussy cut that border. Isn't that cool? And, of course, this is awesome. Almost looks like our potato chip block, but it's a little more complicated. Oh, this is sweet. 
the little basket block. I of kept course. calling it a bear paw. Oh, and no, then, it's a basket. Right, but I, I was like, I turned the page to do that pattern. I was like, oh, I'm so excited to get to do a bear paw. Uh-huh. And then when I looked at the closer to the assembly, I was like, oh, this isn't a bear paw. Yeah, it kind of <laughs> does resemble it, though, doesn't it? There's so many different, oh, I love that. Look at that, just simplicity at its finest right there. I could see a whole uh, whole quilt with this. And this, we talked about this, Peter and I did, and I said this would be an awesome alternate block. Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. Uh, standing alone, it doesn't say much, but if you use that as an alternate block, especially on point, wouldn't that be so cool? Love that. This one. And then the all purple one, but you know, pulls it all together with his other blocks that he's used purple in. So man, he's really got a head start on me. I've only done the two uh, that the rest of us. Uh, well, I don't know. If you guys have worked ahead, you need to let us know. So I'm very proud of him. These are excellent. He did a, a fine, fine job. Uh, I his had a good, PC I is had a good instructor. Oh, no. You did it on your own, Peter. This is just exquisite. Well, I took everything, all the videos I've recorded over the last year, I took all that information and uh -huh. I held on to it. And then, look, he's got a little <laughs> lock on there that, you know, so he can keep him safe. I just love that, Peter. Love, Thank love, Thank you. Love that. Thank you. So, I didn't find a memory box, so I'm going to just stick with my... Uh, bride's box that I painted. When did we say I painted this? 1990 or something like that? Yeah, 1990. So I'm just going to keep this as my memory box. I'm going to keep my uh, Ken Deal ones on one side and my uh, Peter memory ones on the other side. And I'm so glad you're keeping that box as your memory box. Oh, you are? Yes. Okay, good. Because that means I get to see it. Oh, okay. Okay. So, Anyway, this was our block from last time. Remember Kim that? Deal? This is my Kim Deal. Now, did you say we were going to get Kim Deal fat quarter bundles? It's on order. They're on we order. We don't yet. know. We don't know if they're coming or not. But we did order some. And then, of course, this is what I'm calling my Peter memory blocks because Peter bought me that fabric. And so every month, I am I mean, every week, I'm going to do one in my Kim Deal and one in my Peter memory. Uh, so here's my Kim Deal one for this month. Oh, I love it. I mean, it. this week. I keep saying month because people mostly do blocks of the month. But we're doing blocks of the week. You know, with how quick these go, people yeah. could do one each day. Oh, they you go could. so fast. Oh, definitely you could. Oh, and Dawn, people have been posting pictures of their blocks uh -huh. in our Always Insiders Facebook group. Okay, that how do you I'm get to that, it. Peter? That's Always in Stitches Insiders um, group. Just go on Facebook and search Always in Stitches Insiders. Okay, and then it'll pop up. And then do you have to be invited or can you just go ahead and join? Ask to join. Ask to join and then Cappy will uh, make sure that you get chosen to join. Well, she'll probably look on your page and make sure that you're really a quilter. Yeah. And then she'll uh, let you join the group and that'll be so fun. Um, Chris, can you hand me those two bundles of fabric right there? I was at Moda. You know, I work for Moda. I don't know if I've told you that or not, but I work for Moda Fabrics, and I was there this week, and uh, I said, hey, is there anything that I can use on my channel as a giveaway? And these are um, layer cakes. They're just folded fun. Okay? Wow. Yeah, this is a layer cake, and That's this is a cool. layer cake. Now, this is fabric that hasn't even, the shops haven't even gotten it yet. <gasps> I know. So it's it's right up there with uh, this is uh, Freedom Road by uh, Kansas Troubles, and this is Poinsettia Plaza. I don't know who it's by. Oh, Three Sisters by Three Sisters. Oh, I know, I know. You're, I know, Peter. You can't win. I'm sorry, sorry. But anyway, they're going to be giveaways for our channel. Now this is what you need to do. You need to not say giveaway. You need to not say free. You need to not say any of those words that, you know, somebody might think, oh, I'm going to get something for free. Don't say any of those. What I want you to do is say scrappy. How do you spell scrappy? S-C-R-A-P-P-Y. If that's not really how you spell it, that's how I spell it. Scrap, is that how you really spell it, Chris? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Chris says it is, and he's in high school, so he should know. Scrappy. S-C-R-A-P-P-Y. Use it in a sentence somehow. 
We'll put the, um, there's a little finder on YouTube that you can search through. And anybody who's used the word scrappy in their comment, you got to comment below. Uh, it'll pick them out and then it'll randomly pick one. Uh, actually, it's going to pick two because we're going to give these away. All right. So use the word scrappy. Maybe you can let us know what fabrics you're using in your uh, schoolgirl sampler book. That'd be fun. Okay, the reason that you came today was to do the block. Uh, the block is block number two. It's called Turnstile. That's what it looks like in the book. That's the page. There's really only two uh, fabrics, a medium, um, a dark and a light, a dark and a light. So you can see here, I've done the dark green and the light background is just kind of a little a combo print that has some green in it that carries that green. And that was a fun, easy, easy pick. You know what I mean? Let me get my fabrics over here. Excuse me, Peter. Bring my fabrics over that I had to choose from. Oh! Okay, these things are heavy. So these are all the fabrics I had to choose from. And I just, you know, I gravitate towards green. It's my favorite color. So I decided on the green first. That's what yes. I kind of wanted to make as my prominent color. And so then I just went through here and looked at my backgrounds and thought, well, which one of these backgrounds would look good? I didn't want anything big scale. You know, I wanted something kind of a little bit smaller scale than this. So that was one factor I looked for. I wanted it to be light because I wanted it to have contrast. Could I have gone with a gold? I could have. Look, that's real contrasty. You know, I could have gone with a gold. But decided that I would just go with this because it had the little green star. And I just liked the way they looked together. Mm. So that's how I chose my fabrics for this block. But perfect now, pairing. perfect pairing. But now, let me put this down. For my Peter memory block, I thought I'm going to change it up a little bit, Peter. Just because she put the pinwheel as the dark mm -hmm. and the background as the light doesn't mean that you have to. Don't got to do this it. This is what I'm going to do. <gasps> Love it. This is going to be my pinwheel. Oh, I love it. This is going to be my background. Oh, that is rich. Isn't that going to be fun? Well, so I knew, you know, that I was going to be using this fabric because this is my fabric I'm going to yeah. use in every single block because this is my Peter fabric. Wow. And I went through and I said, okay, now last month's block, what did I do with last month's block? Did it get put in the box? Oh, maybe it did. No. no. Potato chip bot? No. Right here underneath the giveaways. Don't give it away. Okay. Don't so, give your block away. No. So last time I used blue and black. Well, I kind of want, didn't want to use blue and black. So I eliminated all the blues and blacks. Said, nah, I'm not going to use the blues and blacks this time. So that left me with the pinks and the reds. Mm. All right. And I looked at this with my pinks and reds. And I thought, well, that would be fun, but it's the same print. So I didn't really want to use that. I might use that sometime when there's more fabrics. Okay. And then this, eh, I thought it competed with this a little bit too much. I thought the black kind of like looked like black little eyeballs. And I didn't like that. Snake eyes. Yeah. I didn't like that. <laughs> this just didn't speak to me. I don't know why. It would have been a good contender. But then I put it on this, and I thought, ooh, yeah, I love that. I love the scale. Mm -hmm. It's larger than this one, so I've got a difference in yeah, scale. Nice. You know, any time that you can get contrast through value and scale, that's a win-win, okay? So here I've got both. I've got a little bit bigger scale and a very small scale. I cut the appropriate uh, squares that it says on the pattern. Now I'm going to come over to my sew machine. Now one of these was cut something and seven eighths and I just bumped it up to the whole number. Okay? 
because uh, it, at this point, I'm going to have to size them anyway. So I went ahead and bumped them up to the whole number. But it wants me to cut this one in fourths. So this is what I do. If you don't have a rotating mat, which I'm going to get a new one, and I'm going to show it to you. Tammy uh, showed it to me, and it, it's on order. It's coming in, and Cappy and I are going to have a kind of a turnabout, a turn, a rope, a, what, a what spin off. A spin off. That's what we're going to have. We're going to have a spin off to show you all <laughs> the spinning mats and why we like them and why some are preferable to others. That's so that's going to be fun. Isn't that going to be fun? That's fun. A spin off. Uh, so as soon as that comes in, we're going to have a DJ Dawn at the deck. Yeah. So I'm going to cut that one from this one from corner to corner. And then instead of trying to move the fabric, look, rotating mat. I'm just going to rotate this little tiny mat. And it's look at that. Mat. It just stays right in put right in place. And now I have four little triangles. Now the part about this is when you cut it in force, the bias is right there. Okay, so you've got to make sure that you keep that in mind. Now this one, I'm going to just cut it in half once. From corner to corner. And now my bias is in is here. So my bias is along the short edges here, and my bias is along the long edge there. Now, why is that important? Well, because you can see that here's my seam on two sides of this block. So the bias is getting sewed in, and then this is this piece, and the bias gets sewed in there. So you're always sewing in the bias. You're not leaving the bias on the outside edges. And that's why sometimes we cut the square in fourth, and then sometimes we cut it in half, depending upon where we want our bias to land when we're sewing our blocks together. And then this piece here, it gets cut twice. Corner to corner. and then turn the mat and cut corner to corner. And then again, you've got your bias on the two short sides. So I've laid my pieces out. I'm gonna lay them out on my board here. Chris asked me, Chris is our intern, did I already tell him that Chris was our intern? Mm -hmm. Okay, Chris is our intern from uh, the high school here, and he says, what is this? And I said, well, he's a garment sewer, so he had no clue what this was. This is a little layout board so I can lay my blocks out. So I'm going to start with my big ones. I must have supposed to cut two of these, you know, because I only, was I supposed to cut two of those? Mm -hmm. Yes, I was. Let me go back and cut another one of those. See, luckily, look, I have a little strip here. Doesn't take much. Take this. It's easy to get through there. Now, it's supposed to be uh, a 7 8 inch increment, but I am going to cut it a whole increment. Cutting my square here. Let me look and see what it's supposed to be. Okay, it's only supposed to be this big. Get my ruler correct. Get my ruler around here, right? My strip is bigger than my block has to be. So let me cut that. So what I did was I cut this the biggest size that I needed, and then I just cut my second one that is smaller from that. Saving fabric, and I'm going to cut it in half once on the diagonal. Look at that. Now that was lickety-split, right? 
correct. Let me get my chair back. Okay, now I've got four of these. Pays to uh, read the directions. I know that goes against some of our religion, but. Okay, so this one goes here. This one goes here. And this just cuts down on mistakes. When you lay your block out, first, okay? And then these two, this one goes like that, and this one goes like that. And really, that's the block, okay? You're just gonna sew four of those. Chris has to leave. He has to go back to school. Oh, you don't have to leave? No, I just want to give oh, you. he go wants ahead. to. He wants to see the whole scoop. He wants to get over here and get into the business. Get okay, the so action. so here we go. So there's that. And see, I'm just using this as my little layout here. But now it's a little bit confusing because why? Well, because I switched up the values. You're right. So there's that. And then this one goes like this. If you take time to do this, you'll use your rotary cutter, I mean your uh, seam ripper uh, less, hopefully. And then this one's gonna go like this. And this one's gonna go like that. So now you can see that if I took those three pieces and rotated them, that they would just all be the same pieces. So I'm actually making four blocks that look like that together. So I'm going to start out, well where do you start Dawn? I'm going to start out by doing this. I'm going to put this one to this one and I'm going to sew this. Quarter of an inch. And I think instead of starting with that point, I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to start on that straight edge because I don't want my sewing machine. Now I've got a, a single hole uh, faceplate on my machine, so it wouldn't eat it up. But if you didn't have that, that'd be more important. So now I see that my, I'm gonna do this one the same way. And I know this is my seam, where my seam goes right here. I'm picking that up and I'm turning it over and I know that that might be confusing. I don't want to confuse anybody. I'm putting my finger right where the seam goes to remind myself. That's where the seam goes. And look, every time I feed these through, I'm looking to see that I'm feeding them through the same way so that I know the pieces are correct. So if you end up with a piece that looks like that, or like that, or like that with the red on the top, you know you've done something wrong. You know that seam. Look, now I've turned it so many times, I don't know where the seam goes. So now if I lay that here, like that, I'll know the seam goes there. Okay, so it's always good to pay attention, <laughs> unless you do the first one wrong, and then they're all wrong. <laughs> now, do you think I know that for a reason? Because, yes, that's happened to me before. Okay, so you learn those lessons quick, right? Right, Peter? Very quick. Okay, now look at this little gizmo here, uh, Chris. This... This is Aunt Dawn's favorite gizmo. Aunt Dawn's gizmo. <laughs> she loves this thing. Okay, now instead of making a starter and an ender, now a starter and an ender, Chris, is a scrap piece of fabric that you sew on so that you don't have a lot of strings. Okay? You could use that in garment sewing, and then you wouldn't have a lot of strings flying everywhere. And you just keep a piece of old, of, and you start with it, or you stop with it. But instead of us using one for, um, Scrap, we're going to make another block as we do it. Well, so we're, nice. yeah, so <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to put this block on top. This is a little flying geese that we're making for our potato chip quilt. 
And we're just going to sew this little piece as our starter and ender. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to cut this off. Now, this is called chain piecing when you do that. You don't do that in garment sewing, maybe. No, no probably no, not. Probably not. <laughs> because you're not making a bunch of the same thing. I mean, there's only two sleeves, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's not a bunch of <laughs> repeating. But I just take this little thing. There's a blade oh. inside there. And look at that. That just chops them. Just chops them like right now. And look at all that. that. I love that. I love that. Okay, so now get my uh, clapper. You know, we've got clappers. This is a clapper. Now, this is a tailor's clapper. And do you have a tailor's clapper? Do. do you have a ham? Yeah, yeah. Yes, it's the same thing <laughs> as a tailor's ham. ham. Now, look, if I open that up, look what's going to happen. I'm going to have those two dog ears. But if I cut them before I open them up, then I don't have to contend with them. So I'm going to cut those off before I open them up. Look at that. That just opens them right up, and they're gone. So you do a little prep beforehand. You open them up. I've got glue on my fingers because I did a gluing video a minute ago. So... Press that seam open. When you do garment sewing, Chris, do you press seams open or do you press them to one side? Open always. Always open. Always open. I prefer to do them open. A lot of people do to the side, but I love them open. Okay. Less bulk, right? Yep. Yep. That's flat. There you go. See? He's teaching us things and we're teaching him <laughs> things. And it's so exciting. We call that fresh meat. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh ham. Fresh ham. Fresh ham. Yeah, <laughs> because of our tailor yeah, Sam. Yeah, fresh ham. <laughs> you got a good sense of humor there. <laughs> okay, so see how I'm laying those out and they're all the same? They're all the same. It's going to make a pinwheel. But this time the pinwheel's not going to be dark. It's going to be the lighter color. So there you go. Look at that. Pretty snazzy, huh? Clean up the mess. Let's put this back together. And look at how that just fits together and how that makes a nice pinwheel. So now I'm just going to flip these over and I'm going to sew these together. Now, am I going to pin, Peter? Nope. I am going to pin. You know why? Because something matches up. Because I want that point to stay in the middle. Okay? I want these two points to be in the middle. I've oversized these, remember? And so I want those to stay together so that when I go to uh, square them up, I can actually get a square. Now this time I am going to have to start on the point. Ooh, I'm sewing with my shoes on. What am I thinking? Chris, do you sew with your shoes on or off? Ooh, well, it depends on the mood, but I like them off. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Peter? Off. Uh, really? I did not know that about you. Yeah. Okay. You have better control if you don't have your shoes on. Right, right. You can that really, big toe. you can feel <laughs> yeah. the, you can feel <laughs> the presser foot. Yeah. And some people just sew with the start stop button. I don't know how, but they do. Uh -huh. I don't, I can't do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now see how that's a little bit bigger? That's because, remember, I oversized. I oversized. It was supposed to be something in 7 eighths. I can't give you the increments because you got to look at the book. But it was supposed to be something in 7 eighths, and I took it up to the whole size because I have to resize the block anyway. Square it up. That's called squaring it up. Now, I just love this, and this actually could be a block all in itself. It's only going to be two and a half inches, two inches sewn in because it is one fourth of our four inch block. But we could change the increments and make it a four inch block. I don't know if that's in the book or not. I haven't gotten that far. Like some people went ahead and did 16 blocks all in one week. Well, you 
You made a whole entire quilt, though. Oh, yeah, I did make a quilt while I was gone. Yeah, you made a whole quilt. And yes, then you I did. did. And then you did and somebody's then I binding. Did. And then <laughs> I and I also did all my potato chip blocks. I did ten potato chip yeah. blocks. You got a bin for them. Yep, and I got a little <laughs> and I went to the flea market all day one day. Yeah, I was busy. I was busy. They You weren't slacking. No, no. They uh yeah, they they like to put me to work when I'm there, which is fine. I enjoy it. So you Here, know. make this quilt. <laughs> Who okay. doesn't want to sew with fabric nobody else has seen before? Oh, that's I mean that's it the was best. yeah, it was that is the best. Years. I get to sew the uh, cancer quilt for this year. Stitch pink. The stitch pink quilt for this year. And the fabric is yummy delicious. Now look at this. I want to show you this just because this does happen. See how that fabric has slipped over? This is the time that you get out your stiletto. We're going to put that little cap where we know where it's at. And you lift up. Do you use a stiletto ever? I do not. You actually. do not. Do you have I you ever don't. seen a stiletto, Chris? Yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna use my stiletto to guide my fabric through. It has her wooden iron on the other end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my finger iron. My iron finger. She calls it her wooden iron. My wooden iron. There we go. Now I'm gonna pick up another one of these. Instead of a beginner and an ender, I'm gonna sew on half of my uh, flying geese. And then I'll have that ready to go when I'm ready to finish up a flying geese. It'll be half done. So see how I don't have a big thing of thread hanging out? If I would have just brought that and cut that with my cutter there, I would have had a lot of um, wasted thread. Now my wasted thread is in another project. Mm -hmm. That's a time saver, a money saver. You know, I'm all about the frugalness. <laughs> so there's, you know, half of my flying geese is, is already done. Fun. So I just keep little elements up here on my board uh, ready to go. These are all potato chip blocks ready to be sewn. And I showed you a potato chip block, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of these Gorgeous. little four-inch potato chip blocks. Amazing. I'm loving it. Did you see the fabrics I used? Uh, these are some new fabrics by uh, Joe Morton. I think people mm. might be interested to see that because oh, yeah. they're not out yet either. Yeah. They're just now coming to the store. But look at that. Mm. Aren't those pretty? Now, this one's my favorite, Peter. Oh. Uh, <laughs> this is my next favorite. <laughs> <laughs> That's is really that, cool. Is that your third favorite? And then this is my third favorite. <laughs> And then this is my <laughs> ultimate favorite. <laughs> this is my granddaddy of favorites. But look at that. Isn't that pretty? Oh, just love it. Love it. So, had fun time doing that. Fun times had by all. Now. Let me show the potato chip quilt real quick. Yeah, yeah, I'll show that. That's the potato chip quilt. Okay, now I'm going to get my favorite ruler. Do you remember what my favorite ruler is? Peter? The easy triangle square. Triangle square up did ruler. Did I say it right? Yes, you okay. did. Triangle square up ruler by Quilt in a Day. It's my favorite ruler too. I'm yeah. not gonna lie. Yeah, it's. It pretty, gives you perfectly square blocks when it you square your triangles. It certainly does. And what's so best about? I mean, what's so really great about it is, if you open this up. You have to square four sides. If you leave it folded before you square it up, you're squaring it up all four sides at once. Did okay? You, did you cut oversized on your both your darks and your lights? No, for this? just on the one that said seven eighths. Okay. Okay? Just on that Because that confused one. me. I remember you telling yeah. me that. And then yeah. I, the I other was one, trying to figure out when to do it, when not to do it. Yeah. And Anytime it says seven eighths, you pretty much know that's a diagonal. And so then you would go ahead and bump it up if you're going to square up. Now, if it's a block where you're not going to, you're not going to have a chance to square it up before you sew it in the block. In other words, if it's a piece that's just uh, it's going to stand alone mm -hmm. and not be sewn to another oversized piece that you can square up, then it's okay. Okay. So these I know have to uh, be two and, uh, oh, I'm not going to be able to say. I'm not supposed to say. I know what they're supposed to be, so I'm going to take. Bye, Chris. Bye. Chris has to go back to school. Bye, Chris. Now, the measurement I want it to be 
is this little line here, and I'm going to put that right on my seam line, but because this is a, a square that also has a seam that goes up the middle, look how I can just, I can put that line right on that seam. Nice. And now I'm squaring up both sides at once. And then that just little extra is the extra that I um, oversized the little block. And now it is, say, perfect size that I need. Perfect. So I'm going to do all these. And I love doing this, but you see why I pinned? Because I wanted that point uh -huh. to be somewhere near that other point. So that when I put this on there, there would be fabric on uh, both sides for me to square this block up with. So I'm looking at three things. I'm looking that there's fabric all the way around. I'm looking at my seam line and I'm looking at this line here. And I'm cleaning that edge off and then I'm going to go ahead and clean off my little ears there. Now, this goes pretty fast, Peter. Peter was saying, you know, he couldn't believe it. He couldn't believe it. It goes real fast. And some of them are faster than others. And he said, you know, you could get one done a day. Well, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? I've got a lot to do. I can't. These blocks go really quick. Yeah. I can't devote one day a week to these. But uh, I or, am. Or what I meant to say. Huh. honestly is because you're already sitting down you're already in motion you got the sojo going on right right you're just gonna sew through at least three uh -huh. you can't there's no way you can stop with one right, that's like right. that's, that's like taking a chip box. that's like taking a bite of cheesecake and be like okay that's oh, it that's yeah, all that's i'm gonna have the, is one oh, bite oh yeah that's or like happen. it's like having a you know an ice cream cone and only taking one bite of ice cream cone no that's not gonna happen that's insanity is what that is that's just insanity peter so you're at least you're at least making three of these. Uh huh. Well, yeah, least. you got your fabric out. You're gonna yeah. You're playing. You're having fun. Yeah. You're away from the mundane. But you then don't again, go back to the mundane. But then again, if you only have 15 <laughs> minutes, you could uh, make one and yeah, be done. Yeah. So now there's that. That's a good point, Don. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a project that if you just stay consistent, it's a different block each time. That's why it's fun to do these blocks in between your potato chip blocks. Oh, yeah. Because your potato chip blocks are no-brainers. No-brainer. You know, you get all the elements ready to go. You just set them beside your sew machine, and you can just make flying geese as your uh, beginners and enders. And then all of a sudden, you've got, you know, a bunch of flying geese ready to go. Or you warm up with a couple of those blocks, and then you do your four-inch exactly, exactly. Four block. So, you know, there's all kinds of ways to get the blocks done, to psych yourself out. Uh, some people just don't have a lot of time for sewing. You know, sewing is our business, Peter. I mean, that's what we do for our living. Yeah. It's all about it's fabric. It's our business. We're always sewing. We're always. it's our business. It is. Making samples. Right. And other people aren't as lucky as us. So we have to keep that in mind. And we do have to keep that in mind. And we just hope that you just get to sew at least once a week. And this is just a fun little project to get to do once a week. So now, let me get my board back. Now look at how different this looks because I've used the light in the middle. I think that is so cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Isn't that cool? Oh, how different that looks. Wow, I love it. I love it, too. You know what it th I think it looks like? An old tie. A man's tie. Oh, it does. Doesn't it? Doesn't that fabric kind of look like a tie, a silk tie? That's exactly tie? what it looks like. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to sew these together. And am I going to pin, Peter? Why, yes, I am, because no. look right there. No, no I am. No. I am. You're just going to hold it with your finger. No, I'm not. And then match up the next seam with your next finger. <clears throat> no, I'm not. And then feed it through the machine. No pins required. 
Now that might be the way you sew. It is. You know what? It's no pin Monday. Is it? I didn't even know it was Monday. <laughs> Did everybody get their clocks changed over? You know, we lost an hour. I wonder if anybody, um, if they went out to their truck or their vehicle and their time was right because it wasn't changed from the from last, the last time. time. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been me, Peter. <laughs> that totally would have uh, been me. But I'm going to enjoy this. 50s and 60s this week. Yeah. 70s maybe? Well, I don't know. it was still light out when the dogs went for their walk last night at 7 o'clock. So spring's a coming. Yeah, it is. You know, we spring. Crocuses are blooming. We spring forward. Buds on the trees are mm -hmm. getting fat. Going to get me another I saw starter. a woodpecker this morning. No. He was waiting for me. I put the feeder out, and he was right there above my head. Does he think your head is wood? Oh, I hope not. No. Don't want him pecking me. No. No woodpeckers for you. Okay, was he in a tree, or what was he doing? Tree. Tree. I have a feeder hanging on the tree. Oh, so he was getting the food. Okay, so did you see what I just did? I just mm -hmm. fed one of my... Uh, Flying geese. Flying geese through. Flew right in there. And I've got a half of a flying geese right there. I'm just going to put that in my pile of half flying geese. Now, some people, Peter, some people would press one of these seams one way. Yeah. Yeah. And then press yeah. the other one the other way. Yeah. What does and Aunt let Dawn them do? lock. What does Aunt Dawn do? No. No? No. I no. press open. Press it open. You know why? I know why. Because I want to reduce the bulk in the middle. Okay? So by pressing open, I'm reducing the big old bulk that happens when you have all those seams coming together in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they lock when you press one one way and one the other way, but they also cause a little bump in your block. Nobody likes bumps in their block. Nobody likes a bumpy block. You know, people pay pay money to get the bumps out of their blocks. So there we go. Look at that. Look at that perfect And I'm just going to put that over. That and am I going to pin? You yes, know I am. Yes, you have to pin. I'm going to find my center right there to my point. See that? I mean, you could, you could uh, play um, sewing roulette and just see if you're... Your points line up by You accident. could if you need a workout with your rotary cutter. <laughs> if your rotary cutter is lonely, you could do that by all means. Now, I like to pinch that and pull that down so that I know it's nice and snug in there. And then I just put a pin right beside it. That's how I get those nice uh, points perfect. to come together. They're not perfect, but they're... They, they're perfect enough for me. Well, let me put it this way. If it's not perfect, it's getting ripped out and sewn back together. You said it, buddy. Yep. Oh, I don't know. I might be lowering my standards. Is it because it's I daylight get. savings? You're going to lower your standards? I don't know. <laughs> not on these blocks. It depends on who it's for and what it's for. If I was using these as pot holders, then I wouldn't care. <laughs> but I'm not using them as pot holders. Heaven forbid. Okay, and give me another uh, little block here. Make me another half. Half of a half. And you know, it is. You, you think, well, that takes a lot of time. Well, not really. You know, and you're getting half of a block done. Half of a. Half of a flying geese. It's worth it. You would have used that thread on your beginner and ender. And now. Got me half a flying geese. Just put it over there with my pile. Get my clapper. I love how everything's right here together, don't I you? Know. I now, know. Now, do you have your stuff set up like that at home, Peter? I do. Yeah. I have an ironing board right adjacent to my machine. Uh huh. I have a cutting, a little mini cutting mat right next to my machine. Uh huh. Um, my mat, my wool mat pressing mats on my ironing board. I don't have a wool pressing mat next to my machine though. Uh -huh. Um, I don't have that going on, but yeah, it's very efficient. Hey, now, you know, the clapper isn't just for pressing. It's also for laying it on the seam. Making it flat. And making the seam flat. And what happens is 
that the heat gets absorbed into the wood. And so there is no, absolutely no bulk right there in that center. How's that, that just, point? How's that point? Yeah, well, it could be better. Let me see. I'm seeing, it, looks, see. it doesn't look too bad on oh, a galloping horse. That looks good. Yeah. So there are my blocks. Two different blocks. One with the dark on the pinwheel, one with the light on the pinwheel. Let me bring my other blocks over. There's my Kim Deal one. Look at how pretty that's going to be. Oh, that's so pretty. Oh, isn't that going to be fun? Okay, so you have a week to get the pinwheel one made, and you can see it goes pretty fast, right? Very fast. I'm so glad you guys stuck with me. I hope you stuck with me through all my stuff that I got at the flea market and what fun I had. And uh, I thought about you guys because uh, I uh, bought my potato chip tin and I was excited to get home and put some blocks in it. I'm gonna line the bottom real pretty. I think with some, um, with some velveteen on the bottom. So that's gonna be fun. And um, I'm gonna sew more potato chip blocks this week if I have a chance. I've gotta bind a quilt. I have to finish up a needle punch. I have to start a new needle punch. And I have to work on my ribbon runs through it. So that's pretty, a lot of big stuff. But if between my ribbon runs through it blocks, I could make half square triangles, I'll be getting some potato chip blocks done as I'm making my other blocks. So that's exciting and fun. Let us know how you're doing. Put in the comments, Scrappy, S-C-R-A-P-P-Y, to be entered into uh, our giveaway. Don't say giveaway, okay? Uh, but just leave a comment and uh, we'll pick a winner next week. Alrighty, see you then, bye.